All right. Thank you very much, Gustavo, for the introduction. So as uh, Gustavo mentioned, I will be talking about uh, some principles of colostrogenesis and colostrum composition, uh, talking about the physiology, and then Gustavo will be talking more about the plastic, practical aspects of, of this issue. Um, this is a very relevant topic, very timely um, in all the US, especially uh, Jersey Hertz, uh, we are seeing, especially in the winter, decrease uh, quantity of colostrum production. So first we need to start defining what colostrum is, and it is the first secretion uh, of the mammary gland after calving. And it has uh, highly concentrated nutrients, white blood cells, immunoglobulins that are paramount for the defense of the calf and growth factors and cytokines and uh, among other molecules. And we need to differentiate these uh, milk secretion from transition milk and from what is the saleable milk. Uh, so transition milk is defined as a, a milk that is the, the secretion of the mammary gland that is obtained from the second to the sixth milking. And when we are obtaining this transition milk, nutrient concentration of IgGs are progressively decreasing until reaching the typical levels of uh, the, the milk that is typically commercialized. So not only IgGs are decreasing, but also water content is increasing, as you can see uh, in the first column of, of uh, I apologize, the first row of this table. Uh, total sol solids are increasing. So we start with a, a very concentrated uh, mammary gland secretion, which is a colostrum, the first one. Then we go through transition milk and the solid starts to decrease. And that is because fat con concentration is decreasing, total proteins is uh, decreasing. Uh, among these total proteins, very important ones are immunoglobulins, especially IgG1. Uh, on the opposite, lactose is increasing. Uh, lactose is uh, the osmotic driver for milk production. So um, uh, we can see that as lactose starts increasing, also the water content in the milk secretions increase as well. And ash, of course, uh, it decreases from colostrum to the six milk secretion that would be the commercial milk. Um, I try to keep this table very simple, but there are also white blood cells that uh, play a key role in the colostrum secretion, lactoferrin, that is a molecule that helps to prevent infections, hormones, IGF-1 and insulin, etc. They are very important, uh, not only for the uh, transfer of passive immunity of the calf, but also for the GI tract development of the calf. So why do we care? Because it's the most, the single most important meal in the whole life of, of the animal. Um, and the reason for that, one of the reasons is because there's no transfer of immunity during pregnancy. And this is because of how the placenta is in, in bovines. So calves are dependent on that colostrum to acquire the immunoglobulins. It will determine health. Uh, if we have a good uh, passive of, uh, um, transfer of passive immunity, it will decrease morbidity and mortality, and it will increase growth rate, and it will also increase production. Um, there, there's evidence that calves that have a good passive transfer of immunity increase milk production in their first and second lactation. To show just some evidence on this, I won't be covering every single aspect, but uh, the impact colostrum has on half on, on this line, this is a, a survival curve. Uh, basically, the, the uh, fastest that the, the line goes down, um, you will have a less lower percentage of survival. So the red line, you can see calves that had uh, concentration of IgGs in their serum that was below 1000 milligrams per deciliter, and they had 8% mortality. And on the green line, you can see calves that did have a better uh, transfer of um, passive immunity, and they had 3% of mortality. Another way to define this benchmark would be 10 grams per liter, and we will be talking about this number in, in a minute. 
what is the goal? So the goal is to have calves with uh, levels of concentration of IgG over 18 grams per liter. And I told you we will be talking about 10, but um, with years we are seeing new research and, and, and the goal is now, now changing. We want to have over at least 70%, but some dairy farms are shooting to over 90% of calves with, with, this, with this number. So how this will look, basically, if we have a calf that has roughly 36 kilograms, that calf will have 3.6 liters of plasma. So with this concentration of, of IgG, uh, the total amount of IgG they will have in plasma will be 65. So that is the goal. We need to get at least 65 grams of IgG in the plasma of that calf. For that, we need to have colostrum of appropriate quality, the right amounts, quantity, and uh, that is uh, rapidly fed after calving. And that is because the absorption rate of colostrum decreases, uh, apologies, uh, of uh, immunoglobulins will decrease with hours after calving, all right? So an example for that will be if we have a colostrum with very high quality, for, for instance, 70 grams per liter of IgG, and we feed the appropriate amount that is uh, 10 to 12 percent of body weight of the calf, uh, roughly four liters, and we feed it rapidly after calving and then have a good absorption that it would be 35 percent. Basically, that calf will have uh, 100 grams of IgG in, in, in the whole plasma. If we divide that by the plasma of the calf, which would be 3.6 we will get this concentration that is excellent, 20, 28 grams per liter of IgG. This is a great scenario. A very bad scenario would be if we feed colostrum of um, inappropriate quality, 30 grams per liter, and we don't feed the right amount. Even if we feed within one hour after calving and, and get good absorption, the, the total IgG of the calf will be inappropriate. And when we divide that by the amount of plasma that the calf have, we have this concentration that is very low. And as we show in the previous graph, we'll uh, duplicate, more than duplicate the risk of, of having that calf dying. So now that we talk about the importance of, of uh, colostrum management and feeding, let's talk about colostrogenesis, which is uh, the prepartum transfer of IgG uh, immunoglobulins from maternal circulation into the mammary secretion. It is a decrease and finish stage, and it starts several weeks prior to calving, roughly three weeks after calving. Okay, so we will be focusing mostly on this transfer of immunoglobulins through the vasolateral membrane of secretory cells in the mammary gland, the transportation through the cell and um, the release of those immunoglobulins in the lumen of the alveoli in the colostrum. Um, this is quite important because up to one pound per week of IgGs are, are transferred. Um, and mostly the, that IgG is IgG uh, one, not two. And you can see that the concentration is way, way my, much higher of IgG one compared to two. So in order for that process to happen, again, we need the IgG to uh, bind to the uh, basolateral membrane of the secretory cells. Uh, in order for that to happen, there have, there have to be receptors, right? And, and this is determined through hormonal changes that we will be talking about in the next slides. After the IgGs bind to these receptors, they are internalized, they are transported, and then they are released in the, in, in the lumen. This mechanism is not fully understanding uh, and it's complicated, it won't, it won't be covered completely here, but this principle um, is called transitosis and, and, and it's the movement of IgGs from the blood of the cow to the lumen of the alveoli in the colostrum. And the important thing that I want to mention here, and Gustavo will be talking about the prepartum energy requirements of cows, is that this is an active process. It requires energy, uh, it requires uh, glucose and, and calcium as well. And this is simultaneous with uh, the exponential growth of the fetus, right? Because we know that 50% of fetal growth occurs in the last trimester of gestation. 
And this is the moment when we are also having colostrum genesis. So uh, having the, the appropriate, meeting the nutritional requirements in this stage is paramount to, for the production of colostrum. With regards to the endocrine regulation of colostrum genesis, we have several hormones involved. Uh, mostly what you can see in this graph is that we have a decrease in progesterone. Um, this happens uh, three weeks uh, starts prior to calving, but we have a sharp decrease, especially two days prior to parturition. Um, estrogen starts increasing roughly one month prior to calving, and corticosteroids, growth hormone, and prolactin roughly uh, start increasing roughly one week prior to parturition. Um, these hormones are involved in, in uh, cholesterol genesis, and I, I won't cover all of them. They play important roles, but the one that I really wanted to mention because Gustavo will be talking uh, about a study in Texas where they saw uh, the lowest production of colostrum in winter. And even though we don't know the cause, one of the hypotheses was that photoperiod could be uh, a putative cause of why we saw lower colostrum production in Jersey herds in this part of the country. And, and that would be associated with secretion of melat melatonin that inhibits uh, mammary development. Lastly, uh, once cows go through calving and they um, are brought to the parlor to obtain the colostrum, we need to make sure that we bring the animal in a calm manner, try to not stress the cow. Um, and once we start uh, doing the prep of the, of the teeth, and doing the milking routine, and, and we have the first contact with the teeth, basically we will be provoking the, the mill leg down, that is a neuroendocrine reflex, and it's neuroendocrine because it goes through nerves to the, to the brain from the stimulation of the teeth. And then it, the brain uh, releases a hormone, that is the oxytocin, and this hormone, what it does, it uh, stimulates the cells that are in the alveoli and, 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 and um, compress the alveoli in order to, to make the release the milk and, and produce the milk leg down. This is very important uh, and it takes one to two minutes. And, and, and the reason why this is paramount is because 70 to 80% of the milk will be in these alveoli and ducts. And only 20%, roughly 20% will be in the cisterns of the mammary glands and the teeth. If we do have a stress, if we uh, have an aversive handler that bring this, brings the cow um, in, in a way that it will be stressful, um, this hormone will be released, adrenaline, and, and we know that this hormone prevents the release of oxytocin from, from the neurohypophysis from the brain, so this will uh, impede the milk letdown. So with that, I try to keep it very short. Gustavo, I will let you start your part. 